Tallyho there champs and welcome to the show. Today, can you believe it's three months since the Dell XPS 15 has been released or announced? Actually, it's a bit over three months. And of course, a plane comes exactly when I want to record. Now, they started shipping these early February. Now it's early May, so yeah, it's pretty much three months. Now, the first unit I got and reviewed would be three months old, and that hasn't had any problems. That was for a friend, as I said. This one here I've had for about two and a half months, so it is what it is, but this is my three-month review. It's held up fine. <laughs> it's like brand new. Just clean it up. It's like brand new. And I'm going to sort of like tackle this from a different way, and why I think this is the best laptop you can buy. Now, best is subjective. I mean, if you need the two and a half pound ultralight battery all day sort of portable thing, well, this isn't the best for you. But if you want a powerhouse computer that can game video edit it's in a beautiful package good battery life it's, this is the best okay and i'll tell you why and the main reason i think this is the best is because all its cons all its bad points if you can say they're not that bad like for example people say well the speakers aren't great on the xps 15 well no they're not the best speakers you can get on a laptop but they're not bad in my book they're decent above average i honestly think but they're certainly not bad now some people say there's a lot of ghosting on the full HD or the 4K model. Well, I don't notice any ghosting in gaming. You know, I have to pixel peek to see it. Any IPS or LCD panel does have ghosting. If you want super refresh rates or an OLED display or something like that, get a gaming laptop. But for me, for what I use for video editing, Photoshop, watching movies, content and gaming, this is the best you can get because you can buy something like say a Razer which will have a GTX 1060 or even the latest Gigabyte laptop has a GTX 1060 but you're going to compromise it's not as sexy as this the build quality isn't as good you don't have the full 15 inch display like on the Razer the display is not as good the battery life's not as good it's hot it's loud and the reality is this plays pretty much every game 60 frames per second high settings if that's enough for you this is good but if you want a permanent gaming laptop well maybe you want to look at something like the razor or the new gigabyte or alienware or something like that but in terms of this sort of elegant beautiful package here you can't beat it and i will have a video editing comparison video comparing the gtx 1050 to the 1060 like editing in the timeline playback etc and just a spoiler alert there's virtually in the real world no difference it performs pretty much as good as the 1060 apart from some certain situations which you'll see in the video which is coming up soon and by the way i'm going to a lot more videos on this xps 15 coming out and they're going to be cranked out in the next week or so so make sure you subscribe to see that and i do have a playlist of like 20 videos of this xps 15 setting up full review everything just check out my playlist on this xps 15 there's pretty much a video on anything you want to know and if there is something you want to know leave a comment there and give me a thumbs up if you like these videos as i was saying to me there's no real bad points on this anything that's bad i would consider average or above average whereas there are some like deal breakers with other laptops as i've mentioned the razor and the gigabyte even the macbook pro you know 16 gigabytes of ram it's not enough for what i do i need 32 gig and by the way not everyone needs 32 gig my recommended xps 15 is the 16 gig i7 model uh, yeah check out the link in the description that's my recommended model but for me i do need the 32 gig and in actual fact i think the only laptop that can compare to these is maybe the hp z book which is like a workstation but it's not as elegant as this doesn't look as good frankly i just don't think it's as good or the new dell precision they have a new dell precision and it's actually as sleek as this it's beautiful and of course you get the killer screen also it has up to 64 gigabytes of ram so i think that's the only one that can compare to this the macbook pro look you're using old skylake parts you've got like ddr3 the no ports no sd card slot no usb type a it just doesn't suit my needs and i think if you're someone that wants a powerhouse sort of computer for video editing or like 3d applications and stuff like that this is really good if you want it in this nice sleek package with good battery life there's no 15 inch 4k monitor laptop that gets as good as battery life as this seven hours on the 4k 10 hours plus on the full hd model and i've been looking around long and hard and i just can't see anything that is better than this for my needs 
Apple may release a refresh of their new MacBook Pro. It might have 32 or maybe even if you're lucky 64 gigs RAM. It may have the AMD 460. I'll be happy with that. But it's not going to have a 4K screen. And I doubt it's going to add a SD card or a Type A USB. So this is pretty much the best laptop you can get for just my needs, the powerhouse needs of being able to video edit, Photoshop, all that sort of stuff like I said. And being in such an elegant, beautiful package, compact and light for a 15 inch laptop with so much power and as i said if you're a gamer all right you probably want to get a laptop with a 1060 but as i said before you have all those compromises with those laptops so for me those laptops are non-starters so i'm talking about the razor blade the gigabyte and of course like the apple macbook pro it's just a non-starter for me so just keeping you up to date on any issues and stuff like that i have come across over 10 xps 15s from the last model the 9550 and the 9560 the cabby lake here either my personal unit review units and units that my friends have bought that i set up for them none of them have had any issues apart from one 9550 which had a gap in its bezel it was a full hd version and had a gap in the bezel but any other issues like coil wine I did have a little bit of a sticky space bar on my last XPS 15, but that sort of righted itself. But any other issues that people are talking about, I haven't had any problems other than the driver issues with the Intel HD graphics, which, yeah, you might get a flickering screen in that. That still isn't fixed to this day, I believe. For me, I don't really get any flickering screens, but I hear some people updating to the latest Intel driver and still getting flickering issues, mostly with Chrome, I believe, and on battery that's an Intel driver issue. I'm pretty confident that will get sorted out. But other than that, all these other issues like coil wine, etc., I haven't had any issues with any XPS 15 that has crossed my path. I can highly recommend this laptop for its durability, how robust it is and how reliable it is. Do you want to check out my videos on installing fresh Windows copy? Because out of the box, I feel that with the XPS 15, it is a little bit buggy out of the box and that's just Dell's drivers or whatever. If you do a fresh install, you get a much better experience. So I'll check out my video on how to do that. Also, any other issues or if you love the XPS 15, leave it down there in the comments. The only bad things I consider about this, like as I said before, the bad things I don't consider being bad, I consider maybe being average or above average. But the two things that really annoy me about this laptop is, and this is something Dell I hope they fix with a BIOS update, is it doesn't support connected standby. That's not a big issue, but that just is the modern way of hibernating. Now, whether they're able to do this with this certain chipset and motherboard, I don't know why they're not implementing it or whether it's a logistics problem because you can have multiple different configurations, I'm not sure. And also what annoys me is it doesn't have speed shift enabled or it doesn't even have an option to enable it now you can use throttle stop to do it i hope they implement speed shift or at least give you the option of turning on speed shift in a bios update if they don't i will show you how to enable speed shift it's just why would you cripple the cabby lake in here that's one of the main features is that speed shift is better it's supposed to be better for ramping up speeds and better battery life so on so i don't know why they don't enable it maybe they've done testing and they found out it's not good in the battery life department i don't know whatever but they're the two things that annoy me it doesn't support connected standby at this moment and speed shift is not available in the bios now this may be fixed with a bios update who knows but when it comes down to it still today i can highly recommend this laptop there's not another laptop out there that's better than this in my books doesn't matter if money's no object there isn't another one i can replace that's better than this for my need and that's why i think it's the best so if this three month review was helpful give me a thumbs up there check out my other xps videos i've got a lot more tech content coming soon especially in regards to this guy here so why not subscribe and until next time guys tally ho